record him. Okay. I am doing a video. This is a guy that I've been watching. This is it. This is an interesting channel. Let's just leave it at an interesting channel. Jurassic Lies 26. The guy's name, I don't know, but everybody refers to him as JL. I don't follow. I've only just started watching this guy a little bit lately. Um, I don't follow his stuff religiously or anything. Um, but there's definitely a lot of interesting information. And JL is all about Seattle, the Space Needle, and um, Elvis. And those links to some kind of event that's going to take place there. Now, um, and right here he's doing this this link with the uh, Manhattan, um, the AT&T, and then Seattle. Okay. Now, um, this AT&T pops up in a number of places. Um, and we're going to get on to that now. I want to break down the AT&T. I want to break down a few of the things in this um, event as well. And I also want to break down... What was the other thing I wanted to break down? I can't remember. Oh, yeah. I know. It's basically the building itself where this thing... Or around where this thing happened so without further ado I'm gonna go we're gonna go look at the building first and then we'll come back to some of this stuff with this um, explosion um, so the first thing I want to look at and just make a few links for you we're gonna do the interesting no I say it's, well, it's all interesting and the interesting stuff first let's go to the building right and this is so the actual explosion took place let's let's talk about that real quick the actual explosion took place between i believe it's church street church street and commerce so what commerce is is the the system we're all trapped in at the minute it's the fictional side of the system right and um yeah we're trapped in the fictional side of the system right now it's referenced with the moon the fictional waters is the moon it's the place where we're born from essentially we come out of nothingness um birth from the waters into the to the material world which is over here the sun into the light of the sun and into the the physical world that has a set of rules that's in stone called the natural law so what we're actually here to do is to find balance between this and this. And the set of rules is has already been written. It's already written down for us to follow right here. In case we don't know, in case in case we are lacking spiritually over here, <laughs> in case we can't make those determinations for ourselves in our head, it's been written down for us as well. This is the beauty of this reality. So this is what we're trying to balance. The Twin Towers. This is Church Street, nature. Okay. This is your church that you're born into is nature. This is the sun, Jesus. This is physical reality. And over here is fictional reality. Um, to a certain extent, the spirit world. God, even. Um, all those things are over on this side. Um, and it takes a man that's super balanced to be able to balance this and this. Okay? But the nice thing that God did is he wrote it all down for us here. Um, in physical form for us. Not actually in writing, but in the, the, the way the world is constructed. The set of rules is there for us to follow. Anyway, I'm digressing. I wanted to talk about this building. So anyway, we've got the Twin Towers there. That's the first, night, you know, 9-11. There we go. Cologne Cathedral. There's your, there's you and there's your clone counterpart over here. The twins. You know, one looking forward in time, one looking back in time. And the balanced man that sits in the present. Between those two things. Right. What have we got here, Dan? Oh, look at this. Right, the first thing we've got is we've got a bridge. This is the first thing we've got. Here's your gateway. What does this what does this bridge look like? There's two bridges I can pull out of here. There's a bridge um, called, you've guessed it, the Golden Gate Bridge. 
this is what I'm going to reference, that has two towers on each side of it. Okay. It's brilliant. It also has a little arch bridge at one end as well. Um, but we've got the Golden Gate Bridge here, referenced here. And we've also got an arched bridge. Here's your gateway right here. Here's the porthole. Here's the thing you're born out of. Right next to the porthole is the other thing that you're born out of. We're going to get into the logo in a minute. And we're going to get back into the AT&T in a minute. But I've got to do this first. And then what have we got? We've got this kind of triangular shape with the bottom off a little bit. Well, where do we... What is that? That is... I'll just tell you right now. It's the Hoover Dam. Let's look at it. Look. We've got this shape here. You know, the, the wedge shape of the Hoover Dam. Here it is. And here's your arch bridge going over the top. Okay. This is the V. This is the V, the, the womb right here, where you're going to be born from. This is the thing where you're going to come out of. You're going to flow over the top of there. This thing's going to break down. You're going to come through. The birth of, the rebirth of man. Okay. This is what this is. There's the arch bridge. And here's your, here's your dam there. Oh, my word. They've even gone so far as to put some, like, lines on here, which looks like water coming over the top. Kind of reminds me of that one dollar bill thing with the with the the shield and the water coming over the top the lines um, so it's interesting isn't it what's in the middle of there what's coming out of there is the a t and t the two t's let's break down before I get onto the a t and t and break that down but this is the gateway this is the the port colors this is the you know, the eye of where you need to come out of. All right. Now, before I break that down, though, um, let's just break down this logo. I mean, you just can't write this stuff, guys. I'm telling you. Look at this. Um, was it Bell that invented the, the telephone line? Um, so we've obviously got the Bell here. I don't know if 18... I haven't researched it. There you go. I admit it. I haven't researched it. I just looked at the logo. And of course, we see the the bell here, um, for Bell, the inventor of the telephone line. Maybe I don't know, but this is what you're getting. You're getting a message, you know. Just think about the telephone for a second. Think about the old style telephone. You would have, um, you would speak into this, and you'd put this part up to your ear as well, and you'd hear out of it. Okay. You know what does Marty blow up at the start of the at the start of Back to the Future, and that's another one I've got to go back over. You know, um, you've got the donga here, <laughs> the donga, and then you've got the feminine aspect of the thing as well. Okay, the, this is the feminine shape. You could flip it upside down; it would be the womb. It's the hips of the woman here, the bell shape of the woman. Um, the feminine figure, the same as like the pairs, the feminine figure, you know, and you've got the donga in between here. The donga being the the Johnson, the Peter, <laughs> you know, I mean, you just can't write this stuff. And what does the donga have to do? The donga has to move around inside the woman, inside the bell, to create the vibration that you hear, you know, to create them you know, the sound to create something. You just can't like this stuff. I mean, the the symbolism is so basic. Um, I don't know. Anyway, this is their old logo. And they move from the bell. Um, and eventually they put the, the circle around the bell. And, oh yeah, what you get at the, end of, at the end of the... At the end of the wiener is the bell end, you know. I mean, oh dear. Um... But they put the circle around the bell, and then what we end up is this thing. And they've made it look like a ball because they've got the the way it's um, the way the you know the lines are draw, drawn on this. We get a like where the light would be hitting it. You get this sort of highlighted area, which is what we should have on the moon. But I don't. I haven't come across being able to see it actually. And that's what this is. This is the moon. What do we have on the moon? We have the seas. This is why we represent the merchant system with the sea. You know, seas are on the moon as well. Those grey areas, the seas. 
this is what this blue represents the seas on the moon this white disc object or um, spherical object whatever you want to call it it's the moon the same place I've been going on about the same place you come from look at the colors the Virgin Mary the white and the blue of the Virgin Mary it's all the same symbolism um, go watch Elvis's film the um, Viva Las Vegas the blue and the white is hit multiple times in that that just the colors in that film you can deduce you know the meaning behind that film um, you know he's you know Elvis is not playing the bad guy in that film he's playing the man that has to balance between the woman the fiction and you know his reality what he wants to do um, let's see now I, I'll get on to that later because I, I don't I don't want to get into that one hang on a bit I just you know I'm flicking through these I just saw that one pop up hang on a minute so we've pretty much done the building you know we've got the dam here we've got the water flowing over it we've got the porthole the gateway where you have to come out from be born from We've got the arch bridge over the Hoover Dam, you know, the arch, um, that bridge that's in front of the Hoover Dam. We've also got the Golden Gate Bridge here. Uh, we've got the Twin Towers here. We've got the Twin Spires of, like, Cologne Cathedral or whatever, you know. You've got that image of the twins there over and over again. We've done this one to death now. Um, what JL references is these three columns on each side being the 33 three different columns which I will agree with and he had this ring up and these three columns here with Elvis okay taking care of business okay business is the merchant system this is what business is what's it what's what we got right here I mean I haven't one two three four five one two three four five diamonds here fifty five one two three four five diamonds here 55 again balance balance 55 is balance one two three four five six seven maybe eight i'm not sure if that's seven or eight so if that's reflected over here we've got an 88 and that might be i don't looks like a different number of diamonds over here anyway whatever 88 77 the year he died I mean, we can start counting diamonds here, but what is a diamond? Diana the moon, Diana, dia, moon, diamond. The diamond represents the moon. It's something that's been cut from the earth and created by man, if you like, from this reality. It's had to be cut like that by a man. No, it doesn't just come out of the ground looking like that you know this is the moon this is taking something and creating something that's not really real but it's it all the time it's based from nature so you know like law like when we make our laws we base it from natural law first and then we create all the legal system bullshit that goes over the top excuse my french but anyway, you know, this is super interesting. Um, yeah, the lightning strike. You know, you've got the lightning strike of Zeus, hey Zeus, Jesus. Um, and you've got the moon in, in the middle here. Um, and what we're trying to do is we're trying to balance this, you know, this nature and the moon again. Anyway, anyway, I've digressed already. Um, what I want to do is get onto this AT&T. So we've kind of done the moon bit here to death. Let's not talk about the AT&T. AT&T is all over the place, you know. Again, with the bat, the at, the at, the at at walker in Star Wars. You know, all these references to the AT&T. Manhattan um, and Seattle, you know. This is, these are the ones that JL comes to. But what is the AT&T? It's two T's. The T is the cross. Okay, and if you go to two T's, what have we got? We've got two T's here. We're going to get on to this one in a minute. This is the cross of Lorraine. 
the two T's. It's my opinion that one cross is the fiction and one cross is the material reality. Look where the one cross here is for the material uh, for the fiction. It's at the head. The cross itself forms the man. You know, here's the body and the legs are down here put together and the arms are stretched out and this is the head. The Coptic cross is very similar to this, except they've got a circle going around it, which happens to then start looking like the onk. Now this is balance within the mind you know this is the spirit realm that's been balanced here and this is the man the balanced man these two things have got to come together in one format like this cross of lorraine to be balanced at and t what's the at and t it's the phone line the telephone line look at it here here's your reference to the double cross of lorraine again the double cross carrying the telephone lines i mean you can't get much simpler than that this is the phone line here's a little thing for um for uh, jl to look at uh elo telephone line the first thing that pops into my head you know and um hey hey telephone line give me a sign or something like that as the is the way I remembered it but it's not actually the lyrics it's just give me some time this is where time's invented from is the fiction times a is an illusion there's only the here and now there is no past and future in terms of I know we're always moving into the the future and we've come out of the past but we're we're always in the here and now and you're between those two pillars again um, at a point of balance between those two pillars between the past and the future anyway ELO again here's a little one for JL and coincidentally Jeff Lynn the guy that you know the head guy of ELO that writes all the stuff uh, all these songs is uh, JL and ELO um, this is I mean let me just put a couple of links in here real quick They've got this this flying saucer thing that you'll see on their artwork a lot. Um, is it the Space Needle? Probably yes. There's your reference there. I don't know if JL has, on the actual channel, has mentioned that before or not. I'm not sure. But again, hello, hello, hello. What did they send out of the Arecibo um, antenna uh, observatory? They sent a message into space, a hello message. Hello, 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 McFly. Hello. <laughs> Anybody in there, McFly? Hello. Elliot Bay. I think it's Elliot Bay. I'm not 100% sure. He's mentioned Elliot Bay, the ELO, before. It's like, hello, wake up. It's like the wake up call, isn't it? Hello. Hello, is it me you're looking for? Anyway, you know, we can go through this all the, t you know, there's a ton of stuff to go through. And I, you know, I can't get stuck on, on that. But anyway, that's an interesting song, you know, and ELO, I mean, they're loaded. The reason why I go to, I mean, e I've looked at ELO on a number of times before because of, because of just one song that they've got and it's Xanadu. Um, but th this music is loaded and basically the whole most of it the majority of it is talking about the fiction it's talking about dealing with the fiction the fictional woman you know um so that's a, a band that you should go and look at um among other bands you know i mean it's almost like 90 percent of music out there references this you know and a lot of these big huge bands like the who obviously references stuff Michael Jackson, Elvis, David Bowie is loaded. You know, the Rolling Stones. I mean, the Rolling Stones. Roll that great big rock, that round rock, away from the tomb, you know, uh, and come out. <laughs> anyway, back to the cross of Lorraine and this. This cross. The Levy. Athan cross, the Leviathan cross, the levy. What do we do? We levy taxes, we raise taxes. 
the levee raises the level of the water. I drove my Chevy to the levee, but the levee was dry. Is the levee going to go dry? I don't know. What? I mean, it looks like the um, the Space Needle is levitating. It's up there. It's the eye in the sky. Levee is the dam. Levee's the embankment that they usually put alongside a river to stop it from flooding. It's essentially a dam. That's what a levee is. It raises something. It raises the water level. If you're stuck in the the wrong side of the levee, you're stuck in the fictional waters. Here we go. Here's the double cross again of Lorraine. But this time we've got an 8 at the bottom. This is the symbol, the alchemical symbol for sulfur. Um, somewhere along the line this has been corrupted and somebody's made it into a symbol for the devil. Um, and it's, you know, I mean, you can start me putting Lucifer and that sort of idea of fire and Prometheus and um, that idea of being given that ability to have ideas and the fictional ideas that we have coming from that. Um, it's not an evil thing. You know, we're here to be different from the animals. We're not here to be a monkey in the jungle, you know, picking ticks off each other's heads. I mean, this is what we are. We have this gift. Now the big problem is being able to balance the gift here, you see. And you can get a number of different symbols from this, you know, of course, there's the two balls and the cane and all the rest of it. But what's the number you get from this is the 811. And it's the middle of those Lucas numbers again. It's 1118. Those are the numbers. This is, I mean, there's so many numbers that reference this, like Diana, Princess Diana. This is something you should go and look up. The year that they built the Space Needle, 61. I don't think it opened until 62, but they built it in 61. Diana's born, 61. She gets married in 81. All these numbers start lining up. She dies at the age of 36. 36, which we're going to get onto the three sixes, but 36 is just a balance number. It's the, the completion of a cycle. It's 360 degrees. This is why 36 is so important. But anyway, we're, we're back to this 811 number. This 811 number shows up everywhere. Look, here we go, back to the future. Everybody knows, everybody's heard people talk about this, the 911 here. Okay? And there's your twin towers and the two flaming um, things going into the twin towers. You know, here, here. T-O-W, the tower here. And the two things and Marty crashes in with his car that has happens to have wings you know gull wing doors but what we've glossed over here i mean here we go with the diana reference here with the flaming torch again <laughs> we've got the staff we've got the hook the crook the shepherd's crook here i mean you cannot as films go you cannot get more loaded than the back to the future stuff i mean it is absolutely littered and here we go i'm going to explain you something here again in one of my other videos i talk about this this car here is i think it's a packard eight i think that's what it is i'm not 100 percent, but there you go packard bell again and the eight <laughs> i'm sure eight references a bell in some way but Here's the here's the bell. Here's the eight. The A T E. The number eight. And what have we got? We've got this line here, and we've got the two lines here. This is your figure eight here. This is your line coming out of it, and here's your two balance lines. It's the same as this thing. Okay? That is your eight eleven right there in Back to the Future. 8-11, not 9-11, and actually, it is still 9-11, but, interestingly enough, if you go to those Lucas numbers that I've referenced a number of times before, which is the Fibonacci sequence, just starting on 2, 
because there's two sides to reality. 8.11 is actually 11.18. It's actually 8.1 that balances, but 8.11, if you reduce the um, 18 down, you get back to the 9 and you get back to 9.11. So it's all the same. This, What I'm trying to say here is that all these events are all the same references for those different events. It's all the same set of references. They all reference one another. Uh, right, what else have we got? Anyway, that is the Cross of Sulphur. And we've done Superman before and being Sulphur Man. And so this, this, this reference is the 811. And we're back to Elvis's birthday again. Uh, the 8th of January, 8-1 again. We're back to Diana, the 8-1. Her marriage to Princess to prin to Princess of <laughs> to Princess Charles, yeah. Let's just call him Princess Charles. Um, so anyway, what else do I want to pull from this? This is the balance you've got to have, though. This has got to, you've got to balance these two things, right? Um, anything else to say about this Nashville thing? The RV, you know. No doubt we're gonna we're gonna mention the V, and the V being. Um, let me just make this clear one more time. The T here, and the T here, is the same as. Um, the T here, and the T here, and the T here, <laughs> and the T here. It's the double cross. And of course, they've made the double cross into something terrible. You know, like, oh, I've been double crossed. It's something bad. Yeah, you kind of have been double crossed because what they've done is they've hidden all this stuff and they don't want to just tell you straight. You know, we can't just tell everybody straight, like what I'm trying to do here now. We can't just tell everybody straight. We've got to hide it and make it all, oh, you know, and. And, and people are too busy with other stuff. You know, you can't put a gun to somebody's head and tell them you've got to go to work and you've got to do this and you've got to do that. And then expect them to have time to try and figure all this stuff out. I mean, these this is the psychopathic mentality of these people. They probably, deep down, think they're doing something wonderful. They probably think that they're, they're, they're here to enlighten the world, to enlighten man. What they are is a bunch of nut jobs. There's no two ways about it. They're just not right in the head. Oh, but we, you know, I, I'm sure not all of the people that are doing this know what they're doing. But there's a certain element out there that know all this stuff, yet they they go along with the the story. Oh, it's it's the way God would want it, you know, and all this bullshit. Yeah, uh, you know, I don't buy into it. I think they're nutters. I think they've created a story in their own head that they're doing something that's you know, supposedly bigger than them, you know, enlightening man or whatever. And quite honestly, I think they're wrong. I think they're all hypocritical nut jobs, basically. Um, and the world would be a better place without them. Um, because they're the same people that allow the, the nonsense to go on, you know, because it's all part of the you know, the illusion which is the awakening of man, you know. Uh, it just makes me, it, you know, that whole idea just makes me a little bit crazy, you know, crazy but sick. It just sickens me, you know. Um, now, um, what did I also want to talk about? So we've explained that. I just wanted to quickly touch on this. Um, I don't know why, why I wanted to quickly touch on it. This, but this is Diana again. Um, and if you look at a picture of Diana, she doesn't look half different from this. But the other guy that looks a lot like this character is Elvis. And there's you can go and look up the side-by-sides of those. And, of course, the Diana Memorial is this thing. Well, JL talks about this thing here looking like the top of the Space Needle. Okay, and it is. But there's, it's also, again, referenced underneath here. And this thing here is also the Space Needle. Um, I think JL kind of glossed over that. 
But this is the control center. You know, this is the tower that sits up in the sky. This is the eye in the sky that controls everything. This is where the radio signal is broadcast from that controls everything. You know what I mean? Um, and again, this is the false light. This is the lighthouse that, you know, leads us, the merchant sailor on his way. You know what I mean? She sits on a little island out in the middle of the, the water, you know. A lot of people will say this is Lucifer or this is Soul Invictus or whatever you want to call it. What it is, and don't get me wrong, to a certain extent, Lucifer is the moon, you know. Lucifer is Mercury. Lucifer is Venus. Lucifer is this ability to have ideas. But the problem is when you're not balanced... The idea takes control of you. Alright? That's the problem. If you can't balance it, which most of us can't, the idea is now in control. This thing is now controlling you. She's even got the Book of Laws in a... I don't know really what that's supposed to be. It's interesting though, isn't it? The, the actual shape of the top of that does look a little bit Art Deco-y. Hmm, another reference to the... I don't, actually, I, that's something I need to look at. Um, but, you know, again, these rays of light coming out are from the sun. But the sun is is behind this. The sun is behind the moon. It's behind the monolith. These are the rays of the light coming out from the sun. But you can't see the sun because of this thing in front of it. The thing that would have been copper coloured, Venus, copper, and has now turned green. If you put... The blue waters of above or the blue waters below, that, if you filter, well, I'll just use this right now, yellow, the gold of the sun, what do you end up with? You end up with green, the Emerald City. You have to, right, this whole trek is following the path of the sun, the yellow brick road, the route 101 that goes up the coast on the sand, which is the yellow brick road. This is the yellow brick road here. This ra these rays of light, the corona, is the yellow brick road. The beach, the sands of the beach, the route 101 up the coast, up the west coast there. You've got to follow it all the way up until you get to this thing, till you get to Emerald City. And when you get there, you've got to pull back this curtain, the toga, <laughs> and that once you pull back this toga, this curtain that she's wearing, what will it will reveal? The true sun that sits behind this thing. Oh, I don't know how many more references I can put in here. Oh, let's just talk about Leviathan again. Levy. Levy and Elvis. If you reverse Elvis, anagram it a little bit. Levi with an S on the end, is Elvis. Come on. Are we getting this? This is the serpent here. Levi with an S on the end. The serpent on the end. I've got... My hands are up in the air. I don't know what else I can say about this. Um, there were a few other references. The 33 pops up a lot, but... Oh, hang on a minute. The RV. The RV. You know, the V again. The V. And... Um, Let's move on to the V real quick, because this will reference you the 33. Because the 33 is not a terrible number. Okay, the nutters like to use it a lot. But what, what you've got to do is you've got to get into their mindset. These people are psychopaths, right? They think they're doing something good. So what they're doing is they're telling you the truth, but they, they're putting a twist on it that makes it look like something evil going on. Okay. 33. How many sides? I'm going to break this down real simple. How many sides does a triangle have? Three. If you put a circle around this triangle, the triangle is the first... Um, I really need some diagrams to do this, and I'll do this on another video again. But the, the triangle is the first um, shape that you can make that will go around that circle. If I had an imaginary circle around there, so you've got three times around to get around the circle to do your um, cycle. And everything in nature is balanced in a cycle. The only problem is, 
if you were standing at the center of this cycle watching this thing you would only get 60 degrees 60 degrees and 60 degrees which is 180 so you've only gone half of a cycle if you were observing it from the center yet you've done a whole cycle so the problem is you need to have two of these triangles to balance each other to do a full 360 degree cycle this is very difficult to follow as i'm talking about it but 360 degrees is a full cycle it's balance in this realm the triangle only represents half of that balance and there's three sides on a triangle it's the three and your other three is your other triangle the 33 the one triangle the one three represents man the upward pointing arrow head the phallus and the other um, triangle represents the bow the downward point in arrowhead the bow that catches the arrow and that balances this other triangle the womb and in the center of that thing is the balance the thing that you are within which is you know they like to say you're contained within the cube but that is what that is that's a, hexa a hexagon that's a two-dimensional um, reference to a cube okay there's nothing wrong with the symbolism the problem the problem what is wrong with people is that they don't understand the symbolism that's the problem you know there's nothing to be afraid of with this symbol but it's hidden in a in a point where you have to get past that idea of like this guy's right and this guy's wrong and you know this symbol only means one thing it's like everything in the world it's got multiple meanings it's part of a whole cycle if you don't see the whole cycle you're not balanced once you understand the whole cycle once you start seeing this stuff it all becomes clear you know you're at a middle point to be truly balanced you need to be that dot at the center of the circle which is the sun you know everything is a zero at that point even th 360 degrees is zero that zero that we forget about you know in gematria and all that other stuff and we say doesn't mean anything well that actually that thing that means nothing means everything as well it means pure balance i don't know what else to say anyway we've done the at&t the double cross of lorraine the Le leviathan cross we've done the link to elvis and his name is right here the levy the dam is right here the levitation of the the disc with the you know with the um the space needle i mean you know the space needle that same thing you come out of that eye the eye of the onk all the same stuff and it's all about balancing the fiction um that's got to be the end of it i'm sorry i don't think i've missed anything out the only thing i have missed out is a few other things again i don't know if i mentioned this but that this blast the let's have, hang on a minute let's just see if i can find it in here the ground zero of the blast they've even got it in another zero the ground zero of the blast is 166 the number of man the 66 the order 66 six is man and that comes back from hang on a minute that comes back from this the star the star of david again man it, i mean you can look at it two ways the mark of the beast and the mark and the man is the same but you've got to balance those two things so the the one triangle these degrees here are 666 six, six, add up to 18 add up to 180 60 degrees 60 degrees and 60 degrees 666 six, six. the only problem is it's a mark if you are just dealing with one triangle if you balance that thing what when you balance something what does it do it cancels out that thing 
So the man is also 666. The balanced man cancels out that thing when he's balanced. So there's nothing to be scared of with that number, with the 666. <laughs> you know, unless you're unbalanced. If you're unbalanced, you, you're you scared. I mean, that's the that's how it boils down. That's what controls everybody in this reality is. It boils down to two things, being scared of something and wanting something. That's the control. You're either addicted to something and you want it so bad, or you're scared of something and you want to avoid it so bad. I don't know, one of the same thing again. And it's all controlled, you know, and again, we're back to the ego and breaking that eggshell of the ego, you know. Oh, boy. Anyway, this is Ground Zero. It's between Commerce Street and Church Street. You know, I don't want to play this, but this is between those two streets. They've made Ground Zero between those two streets to show you. Where did it, you know, the RV, the V, it came from the V, the valley where you're going to be born from. Okay, done it to death now. Um, is there anything else to say? One more little note in here. He picks up on some on some names of. He doesn't actually break these names of these cops down, but let's just look. Hosey, uh, Sipos, take a Sipos of water, siphon. Wells, water again. Llewellyn, that's a, a name for water. I'm sure of it. Um, a man topping. You're coming over the top of the dam. Miller. This is another guy that uses the fig he uses the wind, the sea above, the blue sea, the blue waters from above, or he uses the the river, the water flowing over his water wheel. Miller. These are all names associated with the water. Interesting, isn't it? Right. That's it. Done to death. Um, yeah. This is the thing you've got to you've got to pull back that cloak. This is why Elves has got the cloak on. This is why Batman wears the cloak. You've got to get rid of that cloak. Get rid of that vampire bat that's going to stick the two fangs in your neck and bleed you dry. That's what you're dealing with. The Empire is the vampire. It's the same, you know, it's the same idea. You've got to get out from underneath that cloak, um, that clone. And you've got to come and be the true man. And the only way you can be the true man is following nature following Jesus, which is natural law. It's those, the te it's not necessarily the Ten Commandments, but it's those commandments that are set down in stone. That's got to be it. Sorry, that's the end of it. All right, cheers. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you had a good Christmas as well, and hopefully it'll be a good new year, but... <laughs> we'll see. It's going to be an interesting year, I think, again. Anyway, all right, all the best, people. Bye.